additions to the agenda. Anybody? Anybody? Oh, no. I feel like there was one. Is there oh, one? Uh, planned purchases uh, for the highway department. It's a manual for maintenance and a fuel filter. It's actually I, I included it in the back of the package. Yeah, we don't need the fill, we don't need the fuel filter and all that stuff to go in. That's already under the purchase amount. Perfect. I think they were both about a thousand. That's really great. Yeah. Um, and then we have a manual fuel filter. Fifty hundred bucks for a manual fuel filter. For what? Fifty hundred dollars for a manual fuel filter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay.
Is so, that a, not a regular meeting? I think it's the regular meeting. I, I have to check. 6.30 could be the conservation commission too. One's up in Mason Lodge. 9th is a Thursday. November 9th is a Thursday for what it matters. That's, so that's, it's not our meeting, it's their meeting. It's a planning commission meeting. Do you want me to email you? So I was hoping for a joint meeting. That's in the right. From one of these. I, were you asking for kind of a, you know, call to come to a report to the select board? Yeah. Is that kind yeah. of? Yeah, I'd like to see what they're up to, and I would like to um, work more closely with them in general. Okay. Um, I know my issue is bummer. <laughs> uh, noted, okay. and you should still go to one of their meetings too. I will. Okay. Uh, the, the other thing I wanted to bring up here was that I did talk to Elisa, our webmaster, who's not technically our webmaster, and um, she encouraged us to put our town credit card on the WordPress account. Um, because she just invoices us without doing anything other than, like that's the only thing she's doing and it doesn't have to go through her. It's like uh, $8.99 a month right now. But the other part of that is that I actually want to upgrade us to the $13 a month account so that we can make a copy so that I can do edits to the website and present it without affecting our production site. This is what we're going um, to see how things look. Looking at right here. Um, so anyway, that so was that. that. <coughs> what you're referring to is the hosting. The hosting. The, the hosting. Elisa said she's not doing anything for us at all. She was just the in between to get us up and running, and um, she set up the hosting for us. But it's her credit card on the account, and she has to go and like figure out who's she's being billed for every month and. Reinvoice us. She's like, it's just an administrative task. She's literally not doing anything. So I said I would talk to Rosemary about. Um, you can actually have access to the site too. Um, that was the first thing. And the other thing was, I do want to upgrade us for the additional four dollars or whatever it is, five dollars a month, um, just so that we can have a little bit more flexibility in trying things. Because I think. We could probably make our website look a little nicer or a lot nicer just on our own here and there by trying things out on the staging site of this So unless there's any objections, I'll just work with her. You can still call if we have a problem with it. Still call her. That's the other thing she said is that we don't have a contract with her. I have a note that our contract is up in January, but apparently it's not up in January. It was up some other time in the past, which is in the summer. Um, but we don't actually have a, a contract with her as webmaster. Um, so we don't have a contract for her to do work for us. And she suggested that it might be wise of us to have a contract with her that would be on demand. And that she basically just does a bunch of stuff for us for free when we call her, which I don't think is very fair to her, <laughs> frankly. I think that would be. I think that might have been the old contract that expired. Yeah, she hasn't built it for a while. Yeah, she says she hasn't for a while. I'm still really sitting here and volunteering to do so much. Adrian? I don't know if we want, like, we have to think about security and opening up access to our website. I would actually not say that we would want to do that, probably, but. Uh, no, I haven't talked to her since I've been in. Um, but anyway, if, unless there's any objections, I'd like to just go and try it. Yeah, it seems like two things to me. No. It is two things. Right. I but want to go try the like upgrade the four dollars more a month and put our card on it so it does our card instead of doing her card. Mm -hmm. That's one yep. thing. And then the second thing is. We don't have to do this right now. Which Alisa and I basically said, like, she said, think about it, and maybe after the first year we could talk about what that would be. So. I think that's something that we're going to think about. And we should contemplate doing something we have it for. That's true. We should look and see if we have it, something already in the budget. Because I have on our annual schedule, our annual calendar, that we renew with her in January. 
So at some point we thought we had a contract with her for these for support, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It really seems like it would have been in my mind one of those <clears throat> three year renewing upon non It didn't seem like that long ago she came to the board. We had a couple other people interested. That was oh, when what's his name died. Yeah, that's when it was. Yeah, that was a while back, and, and that was a joint decision. Yeah. But um, yeah. So anyway, we can run something from. Okay, cool. So that'll be the first thing. Later we'll talk about contract. And to your point, Duncan, yeah, if we want her to do work, we should probably put something in our budget for it. Is she actually, is the town website all us or is there a village? No, it's village and town. So the village will pick up some of the cost too. If we do the cost, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. You're being sarcastic with me, I mean. I mean, for the $4, I don't think it matters, but for the bigger lift, if yeah, bigger lift, bigger lift. Yeah. Um, the last time we talked to the village about the website, they agreed that we could do whatever we wanted if we paid for it. That was our last discussion with them about it. Anyway, okay, moving on. Sorry to keep us so long. Plan purchases. <coughs> so the back of the packet. Is there anything different than what was in the video? Page 21 of 18, how is that possible? Oh, that's, uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Long time. Okay, but it's still 21 of 18. Welcome to work. So it's the cat. Service manual. And, I mean, the element and fuel element, blue element. I mean, those total up $566. I don't think that we need to approve that per our procurement policy. Yep, agree. So the other one is the service manual. What does service manual mean exactly? It's like a, it's a manual. massive binder that just has... So it really is buying a service manual? It's like the step-by-step -step instructions on how to perform maintenance um, and repair on the grader. Doesn't that come with, with that ridiculously expensive grader we just bought? Uh, I would like clarification <laughs> on why that is not. Like service intervals are not in the owner's manual that should have come with it. That was a um, question we talked about today was why is this something we need um, or, or um, should we be looking towards um, having cat do all maintenance, similar to what we do with the tandems, um, take them over to Allegiance to do all maintenance rather than doing it in-house. And uh, Jason felt that right now they do all maintenance and they'd like to continue to do all maintenance, but he's unfamiliar with the machine. Which is why they shouldn't be doing maintenance. No way on a brand new thing like this big, in my view. Um, like, not that I don't trust Jason, but isn't this, isn't part of the maintenance? Like, did we not get a maintenance with purchasing this ridiculously expensive thing? Um, Doesn't that usually come with, like, for the first three years or something? There's no, a, but they did purchase the extended warranty. Yeah, there is, like, an operator's manual, but I don't think it has specifics for the maintenance that he's planning on doing for the first interval that's coming up. Seems like check checking YouTube. it should be our lines. <laughs> Serious? Check, it up. check YouTube. So, <laughs> he doesn't have a bad point. I, I, I had a comment similar. I was like, well, as I can't figure it out. Like, there's only so many filters on the machine. And he's like, I'm not going to farm and fix this, Tom. Like, okay. That's hilarious. But does it, does it cancel our warranty if we do things like this? That's a really good question. I, I don't know. I can't imagine that it would. But I can't imagine that it would. I think it would. I think it would too. Interesting. Do you want me to reach out to Milton Cat and or reach out to Jason Crowley? Jason can. Yeah. Yeah. Jason is the ultimate farmer. I can't believe we actually use that term. Well, we love that he wants to keep costs in house. Like, 
know. Well, you're not going to ship this thing to the cap for service. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. But, but like, how do we make sure? Yeah. <laughs> like, that idea is better. Depends on what they charge. And how do we make sure we're keeping our ones? Transmission for the creator. Yeah. But again, I, I, it would really be useful to know what items are covered under the warranty. I would assume changing oils and filters are not covered under the warranty. Is this manual updated every year? Too? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. YouTube is updated, you know, every minute, fifty-one thousand times a minute. It just feels like the effort for them to produce this invoice is more than the effort to like drag the PDF into an email and send, right? It's well, a cost to eight. Eighteen dollars for shipping of the menu. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's <laughs> an hourly rate. <laughs> so, yeah, and do they have like a maintenance instead of a whole manual? We don't need a ma manual, we need the maintenance manual. So kind of like, um, There's nothing like manuals to collect dust. So. Okay. You, and it, you know, it probably isn't. It, it, nowadays, it's probably a. Well, it wouldn't even be a CD. It's probably a, you know, a stick or whatever. But flash drive. Yeah, flash drive. <laughs> they just, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah. I just had one of those things. Stick, one of those things just stick at the side of your computer. Yeah. 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 Um, it's a disc. It goes in. Yeah. I used to have those. They were great. <clears throat> I remember five and a quarter floppy disk. You guys probably don't even know what that is. I do. Actually, yeah, it was in kindergarten. A floppy disk. <laughs> okay. What uh, is a floppy disk? Understood. So there's lots of options out there. Okay, we'll connect Jason to. I feel like there's a lot of options on parts.cat.com. Parts.cat.com? Are you going to send Jason that link? No. Okay. Okay, so the five hundred dollar good to go. The other one you're going to fill up on. Yes, Tom. Correct. Yep. Okay. Uh, Holmes Meadow. Sorry, I that was the new ad. So Holmes Meadow. What about it? This one. Yes, Tom wants to. This is the get up. Uh, closing. So. Uh, LCPC started a title search on the property to make sure it fit um, Vermont Emergency Management specs to fulfill that grant. And so the title work has already been done by Page and Fletcher. No, by the other company that they're using, the other lawyers. Um, oh yeah, we're Stitzel, Page and Fletcher. Stackpole and French. Thank you. And so Stackpole and French already did the work, and so if we have our attorney do it, it would be duplicative. Well, our, is the board okay with just completing the closing with LCPC's attorney versus ours? Um, or do you want the town attorney to review the documents before uh, the closing? I personally am fine with LCPC's attorney doing the title search. So, to the best of our knowledge, Tech Home Friends did the title search and found no issues? Correct, yeah. Vems is going to have to review and sign off as well, ultimately, because they're purchasing the property. Um, so it seems, unless there's an issue, it feels like we can move forward safely until there's an issue, and then maybe then we could have Fletcher look at it. But at this point, it feels uh, just unnecessary. I agree. I agree. And LCPC, would, how does the title invoicing and all that work? Like, it doesn't transfer to our management, they keep the management no, of it? It's all in-house. Um, all in-house, what does that mean? With LCPC and VEMS, that, that's still no cost to us at this point. Um, okay. If our attorneys looked at it, I think that might change. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Everyone, everyone was supportive, I think? Um, RFP for municipal and library for emergency preparedness measures FEMA. So if you look um, in the back of attached to the packet, 
not included within just the latest and greatest uh, 18 page document. Or the, um, the last two stakeholders. So these um, have been reviewed with um, FEMA contractor to make sure they meet. So the RFP is from from him and then apply to our work and then the contract is from um, prepared for FEMA requirements and then apply to our work. Um, and you can see the really the most pertinent pages, the rest um, it's mostly legal language are on page one and on page uh, six and page seven I believe, page seven. Um, of the general construction, and it just lays out the work to be done. I met with Brian, um, and Brian, does your company have a name? Brian, do you remember Brian? Brian LLC, to go And uh, with also uh, New England Spray Foam. New England Spray Foam did the work for uh, the fire station recently, um, and they lined up who needs to do what when, which was very helpful. Thank you so much. That was an invaluable moment. Um, kind of switched things up, but I think it's going to make the process smoother. So it's two projects. One is a complete installation um, for the library, spray foam for the lower 48 inches, and then dense pack cellulose um, 48 inches up to the attic. And then at the municipal building, uh, spray foam insulation for the lower two feet um, to then transition to fiberglass. Um, and then the second RFP is to... Can I ask you a question about the dense pack? The dense pack is a library, right? Correct. Um, it, am I incorrect in thinking that there may be some portions of the walls that the dense pack is not really that effective? Uh, there are portions that are unaffected, and then there are portions that are unknown, and there are probably portion, portions that are completely fallen out. When they removed the lower 48 inches, material came out. And there's really no way to know uh, what's remaining. Oops, sorry. And so um, today when we met, um, the plan was uh, to bring a thermal imaging camera to show where the voids are. Um, is that know. something we expect the contractor to do? Or, or yes, and that was confirmed that uh, at least this contractor had one, and it's, I believe it, it was in, no, I'm just second guessing myself, it was in here as for like scope, for skills needed, thermal imaging capabilities as part of the RFP okay. to verify. Um, That's for this foam? Yeah, and so what's well, actually kind of fascinating, I didn't know if you could do this. Is, put in wood blocking and drill a two and a half inch hole. Um, and then they have like a tube that goes up to as far as they can and blow it in from the bottom uh, up. And so that way we have, don't have to put any more holes in the drywall or go into the attic and try to blow through existing two feet of dense back. Um, so it seemed to be the least invasive way to replace what came out from surface extraction. Do you think that sound correct? Yeah, I think um, now that we have an opening down below, there's a better reach to get in there because it's really hard to get everything from the top, which is what happened last spring. They, they did the blown in from the top, and it's far easier to work from a solid surface than yeah. crawling around in that attic. I don't know if up there. And, uh, also included in this that wasn't included is some demolition at the library to remove uh, plaster and lath that um, was behind bookshelves where we're confident there's no insulation now because they blew in from the top and couldn't get around the windows. So that will now be insulated. Um, and then also in the children's reading room, 24 inches of drywall for the same reason so that they can get that space to go up under. Um, 48 in there to keep it consistent. 48 in there? 48 in there. Okay, I think because it's just it's, it's a very small section of room, so we don't want to do 48 over, uh, it's 160 feet around. We don't want to do 48 around, or you know, 48 inches around 140 feet and then 20 feet at 24 inches. It just makes sense to bring it all over the same elevation. Got it. 
Is it okay with you guys if I edit that to match? I missed that earlier. I'm sorry. I'm actually rack at 48 and a half so I can actually put a full piece in. I am. This is having to cut it. I think so. They probably cut it right at 48, so you have to cut it. I think they just. So I'm still seeing the evaluation criteria weighted in here. That we talked but about the, it does that. have it in the, what well, has the rejection of proposals as number 11? No, I might have, I think. I'm looking at the selection process on page 12 of the packet. Page three of the document for the this is this is for the middle school building and library. Uh, the no. insulation does not see it that way. Yeah, so I'm, I'm yeah. actually jumping ahead to the next directive. Well, aren't you just a good student of so, the day? So. You beat me there. I'm seeing it in the I'm seeing it in the insulation one too. But I've slipped on page five. Did I miss it? Oh. Oh, that's what I Yeah. Page five of the packet, page three of the RFP for the insulation. It still has the weighted criteria. The See, I was on this, and you're on this. I think the loose are updated, though, don't you? Oh, yeah. The, sorry, those are antiquated. Yeah. OK. Yeah. That's, just, that's one that went out on Saturday. The uh, RFPs okay. are updated. OK. So this is the emergency of like protective measures. Right. Did I, did I, I think get one of those? It's yeah. in that packet there? OK. Um, so we're talking, yeah, yeah. we're talking about this one, which is the emergency protective measures. For oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Tom, for clarity, which one are we looking at? The one uh, that's loose. There's one, this one says... There's two loose ones. Yeah, but this one is for the provide construction services, and this is for spare time. Okay, yes, so I wasn't right. I'm not, I'm not crazy. And, um, Ron also corrected me, it's emergency protective measures, not preparedness measures. And Ron has looked at these? Yeah, yeah, we spoke today. They check all the boxes for FEMA, but yeah, nothing that's wrong. impossible. Okay, so, uh, yeah, it makes total sense because I wasn't seeing the dense <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you're going to add thermal. Thermal, 48 inches for children's room. Yep, and the page numbers need to be corrected. Oh, because I merged two documents. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So I would motion to approve with the adjustments made. For Tonight. what? For the request for proposals for emergency protective measures of insulation. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Did you say aye, Dr. I did. Okay. Uh, ayes have it. Yeah. And then... Five. And then you, you were covering both of them as we talked. But I would motion. Oh, you know why? So what the packet I've got is just for the insulation. Do you have one separately from that? It's a, so the yeah, construction two. services is okay. right here on the first line. You're looking at construction one. Say so, again? Uh, the reason I wanted it wasn't any insulation. When I first drafted these, I included the dense pack with general construction. Yeah. And then after meeting with today, 
uh, that was removed from general construction and added to installation. So thermal imaging is in construction and not. Oh, gotcha. So, oops. That's my, thought I had it in there. So that was one of my questions on the original one, was that the blocking is, is under the general contractor. Would, would the blocking end up being under the insulation? The blocking is going to be done by the general construction prior to the insulation going in. So the, the general construction needs to do, um, uh, they have to remove the 48 inches of plaster and lath along two walls um, and, and uh, in the children's room. And they have to add the blocking and holes. And then the insulation is just going to go do spray foam and then it comes back. Um, and then the same contractor would uh, prepare for the winter via boarding up windows. There's two broken windows. And so I think because we can't do anything, you talked about this earlier, because you can't, we have to wait for the state historic preservation to come back. It feels like we should just like block them and put a, you know, some heart, some polystyrene to insulate it and then just wait until we hear back from um, historic preservation. So it's just kind of like a holding, how do we safely hold the building so that it's secure and insulated? And that, um, you know, unless, you, I'm open to anything you want to just put it for the trophy. Is historic preservation the same as preservation trusted or not? Or is that something different? It's different. Okay, I'll have to, so FEMA comes and does an analysis as that part of that audit that they, they do, we were texting a lot. And then their historic um, person sends the report to the state and the state then has to come back with an answer to say, yes, you have to do this or you have to do that. Um, and so we're, as soon as that comes back, then we'll, then we'll put, rebuild the original RFP to match what the state says and then to also match the, the boxes of FEMA. Um, so is that? Yeah, one of the windows is just a storm window. Oh, OK. I think that could probably just get ordered and put in it. Perfect. Yeah, it's that one lower window that matches the other two. Yeah. OK. That, and that one, I think, could just get ordered out for now. Cool. And then whatever they have for specs for a window, the general contractor would just have to meet those specs. So Excellent. Um, yeah, that sounds great. I'll, I'll add, is it okay if I add, um, replace it on the window? Is it the nice old contamination? That's like one of the items. I don't see why not. I'm fine. Did your blocking question get answered? Yeah, it's a sequencing question. It yeah. sounds like it sort of needs to be done higher. So, did you say whether the Blocking goes in, then spray foam, then insulation, same day. Yeah, um, well, we went a little back and forth because of uh, as we were talking it through. But generally speaking, you would do a netting, like a kind of like a webbing before yes. you do the blown in. But if we go without the webbing, we would do the blocking instead. So you'd have to block, do the blown in, and then spray. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And the reason was because if you don't, if you have the netting, some will fall down and in front of the spray foam. And if it ever floods again, it all has to be removed again. Whereas if, now this separates the spray foam, which can get wet and then left in place and dry. Right? And then the dense pack is all completely up above. It won't lick water up into those cavities. This is essentially going to buy us four more feet of that flood level. As opposed to if we didn't, we'd be buying nothing. It would be not a lot different than putting just blowing it all the way down. So we're separating them. But and the, the two pound blown in insulation. Recording in progress. By a contractor, three inch minimum, three inches of it, which is R21, um, which is better than what we had. Okay. Or sorry, that came from the FEMA, uh, our regional FEMA. <clears throat> okay, so the changes for this one are remove the thermal imaging, add the storm window, 
fix the page numbering. Anything else? I have a general question about historic preservation by animals. Is that a FEMA requirement, or why why is historic preservation all involved? For, in order for FEMA to participate, all buildings over 45 years old have to go through that process. So the municipal building was 20 years younger than it had to be, and uh, the library fell outside of the 45 years. So. 45 years is not that library was built in 1985, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> housekeeping item, because I'm stupid. So you have the bid due on November 2nd and opening them on November 2nd, but we're not going to open them until the 6th, right? Um, so part of our procurement policy is you have to have a scheduled opening. And so um, I spoke with Duncan about historical processes and it felt the decision's not made, but we just have to them. Yeah. Like part of so FEMA has its boxes and one of their boxes you have to follow your own procurement policies. So we had to like have theirs and then put everything of ours also on top of theirs. And that's why you have this very long convoluted why the contract is included in the RFP is for the same reason. The um, advantage to us is if Tom opens them, he can forward them to us and we can review them before. And we actually meet and have well, some sort of reasonable understanding of what's in the RFP. Gotcha. Yeah. The proposal. <clears throat> so, motion to approve with recommended changes? Second. The construction. One. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Okay. Uh, next up we have... Are you guys here for something else? Okay. Okay. You can hang out. It's going to be all kinds of fun. Yeah, you can stay for the rest of the meeting. I just wanted to make yeah, sure it was going to be all kinds of fun. Uh, VLCT uninsured motorist coverage decision. What does that mean? So, can I make one weird comment? It's not like you're going to. You tell me no. No. I was still making it. I know, that's why I said since how you're going to. Yes, hurry up. There's been a confusion in the past of in, including the Conservation Commission in town projects. These are buildings being replaced to the flood with some flood improvements, but been talked to, I doubt they'd be very interested. But their original request was any project on town property. Yeah. <clears throat> well, these are just getting ready for winter. We're not finalizing. This isn't con I mean, it's just a like, thought. We need the footprint of the building. Yeah. I need to not keep anything. stalling. I wasn't That's stalling anything. anything. Post them. No, no, no I'm mean just stalling like, this. I mean, just mean like we need to keep moving, get the stuff fixed. Gotcha. That's what I mean. Can I just, can we just clarify one thing? So this RFP is just for emergency funding to do what needs to happen to keep the buildings for winter. And then there will be a follow-up RFP for yes. electrical work, heating, mm -hmm. anything like that that might move for both buildings. And those will be one, yep. one RFP. So the library and town will go, municipal building will go together in one. Yeah, if you think of FEMA funding, there's three phases. Okay. Um, and you have the option to stop after any or, or none. Right. Phase one is your um, protective measures, and that's in the response. So the flood happens, you have to clean everything out, you have to fix broken windows, you have to replace swollen doors, you have to do what you have to do to secure property and, and life, right? So that's this is part of that, is pot one. Pot two is the remediation, putting it back to the way that it was, and that's, that's kind of what we, the first that went out. Mm -hmm. That was phase two, kind of jumped straight to phase two, okay. which you can do too, I mean. Right. Um, and then, so that, you can stop there, and then phase, phase three is mitigation and how to protective measures for future events. And so at the last select board meeting, the board chose phase three, and 
So before you do phase two, you want to make sure you know what phase three is so you don't undo any phase right. two work. And it stalls things a little bit right. because you have to bring in engineers and architects. But then you can go back to phase one and make the change, do what you have to do to stall. Okay. And so there'll be a phase two, um, hopefully really soon. Um, we, I think everyone wants to get back there as soon as possible. Um, and so as soon as this is, this is out and done, next week I'm reaching out to LCPC. They've already had some mitigation um, people. They've been collecting contractors for the Lamont County and engineers and architects, um, not contractors, but engineers and architects to help with that mitigation piece. And so that's, that's what's going to push that along. That. <laughs> so we're, we're, there's going to be another RFP, but we're starting over again. Yes, <laughs> and, and okay. I think in, in hopes, I mean obviously, you know, I think the board, it's up to the board obviously, but the hopes is that the next RFP would have both phase two and phase three together so that we just like do the construction and like that. Yeah, hopefully and, we can get through this painful process. And then depending on how complicated it is, it might be both buildings, it might be one, I think. Choose that. The advantage going with mitigation approach is that if we come up with an accurate estimate of the actual damage, which is recognized and accepted by FEMA, then you can you can actually get twice that amount of money, which would enable you. So the base, the way to think about it is, FEMA typically is only going to give you money for what you lost. Put it back the way it was. So they'll give you money for the carpet that had to be taken up. They give you money for, you know, the insulation that was lost. If you go the mitigation route, you could actually have money available for maybe a floodgate or right. some other improvements that you think are important. So we could talk about windows at that point. Maybe we do something different. True. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That, that kind of thing. It's great. So it gives you quite a bit of flexibility. Since we have a good idea of what the cost is to put it back, yeah. um, it's 200%. So you get 100% to put it back, and the second 100% is for those mitigation efforts. So you, you can do quite a bit of work with that and the, and the flood proofing, if you will. Yeah. So spray foam is not considered mitigation? This is considered um, emergency protective measures. Two pound spray foam. The FEMA is calling temporary. And they can chisel it out to run the wires? Uh, we reviewed both buildings and it appeared that there would be no wires in the way. Two, they refer to it as two pounds. How does that relate to inches? You know, most people around here do oh. it by, you know, R, R7, you know, an inch. So, right. two, two pounds, pounds, three inches, or is two pounds? Two pounds is the density of the spray foam itself. It's, it's the lightest one they make, okay. which is R7 per inch. It's, it's what we already spray our walls with. So. Okay. <laughs> so they didn't give it depth? Or that, anything, uh, so. Three inches minimum. Three so inch. Oh, okay. R21, okay. which is... Um, and in terms of, it, 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 it could right conceivably be a permanent yeah. fix. What's that? It could conceivably be a permanent if, if it would be, yeah. I mean, if we look at it, we, we can't get paid twice for it. Right. But we could submit it as a permanent repair right. Right. in our phase two or three. That's right. Piece. And and in the event some of it has to get chiseled out, FEMA will because they, they approved it as temporary, FEMA will pay to remove it. That that effort to chisel it out for whatever has to happen in that space. Yeah. So that's feels like a gift a little bit, so. Yeah, and, and, and like we said, there's not much for, uh, at the library, there's not much in the walls for insulation. No, can I'm, run, I mean, for wiring, they'll be run downstairs in the water. Pierce, so I'll be from the floor, yeah. so I can get out of the way. So there are no outlets in the walls? They were in the baseboard, so they came up under the bookcases. Yeah, so they're actually out like from the wall. The, the depth of the bookcases. Right, yeah, they, they weren't run right. through the stones at all. And there was nothing in the municipal building. There's, there's that got touched by the flood, no. and that's all still there. I think the only interesting piece, um, does anyone know if the stairwell in the back was insulated? 
Do we need to, can we keep moving? Sorry. Is this stuff that can be handled outside of this stuff right now? Absolutely. Not. I just want to be And at this rate, we're probably going to be. We're going to be anyway. Um, but be. You're not, yeah. Okay. Um, uninsured motorist coverage decision. What was that? So this, um, Thank you. DLCT offers less than the standard. Um, the standard uninsured motorist is $10 million per, um, this is page 17 of the packet. For uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage. Um, and then what they currently offer is 250,000 per insurance. So this is an employee who's driving, gets hit by somebody else, and that person does not have insurance or is underinsured. Um, I reached out to the next page on page 18 is from the LCP. I asked them what's the additional cost or the increase. And um, Kelly explained uh, that it would go from uh, $60, what we're currently paying, to $400 for the $10 million, and that um, they don't see many municipalities take the higher rate, um, and that most often when they see this, it's, it's usually for like a police officer um, who's seeking more than workers' comp covers already. Because injuries to the employee are already covered under workers' comp, so it's like seeking those injuries beyond that, beyond what workers' comp already covers. Um, and that, that's explained in the email from Kelly. Um, if you have questions, I can reach back out to her. Where did this come from? Is there a reason that we're getting? We just have to elect one or the other. It just, um, there's some. That's not part of the original piece. It's separate from the. Yeah, just, I'll, I'll see if I can find the original. I could, I could pull the original email. They, VLCT got a trigger that all members had to choose. You have to like voluntarily choose less than standard. So if you, because, you can accept the standard, and that's what comes, but the VLCT didn't offer it. And so they were forced to ask all of their members to choose less than the standard because it's less than the standard. And they presented the standard less than the standard to begin with because they felt like in most cases everything was already covered with existing coverage. They did offer. Correct. That the workers' comp. Uh, coverage takes care of their injuries, whether the other driver has a charge or not. Where we have seen it come into play is when a police officer gets injured when a suspect uses a vehicle to cause harm to the officer. In some suits, an attorney has sought additional compensation for their client via the UN UIN limit on top of the workers' compensation they're already entitled to. Do we have to carry an umbrella policy? You know all things insurance. I know all things insurance, but what? Why would? What do you mean? Why do you think we would need a number of policy? I'm just wondering if we carry one. Just we don't. We don't. We didn't. Okay. Anyway, a lot of a lot of businesses carry one just to cover all. I like in case you blow through your two hundred fifty thousand and got the umbrella. Well, question okay. on that. On the eligibility for workers' comp if somebody gets injured as a result of an accident. Workers' comp pays two-thirds of the wages, and in general, that's non-taxable. Right? So in general, the fact that you aren't taxing it almost makes up for the full wage, but not quite. Um, so an employee that got injured in below through the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar limit, if they if they had to go on workers comp, they would probably lose a little bit of money. Well they would go on workers comp first. This is above the SOP beyond that, yeah. 250 beyond workers' comp. Beyond workers' comp. Yeah. So they would be 
losing money right away. Day one. As soon as they want to unlock this job. Yeah. It's like short term disability. Um, the question I have I around this too. Short term disability. What? Meaning short term like disability. The, the don't bank. Get the whole thing. Um, the thing I don't understand is why are we talking about a coverage limit of 250,000 jumping to 10 million? Like that is quite the leap. Is there anything in between? I don't know. But, I mean, they, we're currently at 250,000, but think, the standard is 10 million. I right? think that they say, okay, we're going to offer this at $60, or if you don't want this, you have to take the standard. Is $60? A year or a sixty dollars a month? Passive month. Passive is super weird. I think it's annual. About oh. every annual? sixty dollars annually. I'm in favor of staying with the sixty dollars, the two hundred and fifty. Sounds like we have a motion on the floor. We do. We have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Oh, I love it. I like it, Mark. Thank you. I know everything in shows. <laughs> Am I wrong or is passive? Can, I, can you authorize me to say passive is not yeah. regular uh, Can that last motion be with Tom authorized to sign? Yes. Yes. Uh huh. The second. Okay. Everyone agrees. Yeah. Okay. What is the thing you're authorizing Tom to sign? <laughs> the Vermont League of Cities and Towns coverage direction form for uninsured and underinsured motorists. Okay. It's packet page number seven. It's weird that you, you get, get insurance get written out, Donna. Okay. And then you get insurance for people that don't have insurance. We should have good scope and study on this. Okay. Uh, Lamoille Economic Development Corporation Local Development District Contract Approver Approval. Is there any reason we would not approve this? Uh, no. Okay. I think we need to authorize somebody from the town to sign. When we talked about this on our conference call, there was some discussion about, so this L, LDD, is that what it's called? Um, so basically what they're doing as part of the process is, is like reviewing the quarterly report submittals. They're not preparing them, they're just reviewing them and passing them along. So then it still creates a need potentially for assistance for Randall to prepare the reports and the submissions. And we did we did talk with so I guess my, my question is if we approve this tonight, is that what's that do to the rest of the conversation that we had with regard to assistance from LC? I think this is standalone because we need to have an L D D in place. Um, unless, unless Randall, unless Randall does it. Did. Unless Randall does it all. Yes. LDD is required for the NDRC grant. It it unless is, but Randall, Randall could be the LDD. Unless a town employee is the one representing. I, you know, you'd need a waiver for the town employee. That's like the NDRC requires. I mean, to to when I took that um, course. I don't remember that thing said. No, that was not definitely not said. It was actually that we didn't need anyone if Randall did the administration. So he can Who was on that call? He can do grant administration. Sorry, she was on that call. But he nobody, nobody from NBRC was on that call. Yeah, NBRC requires an LDB or a waiver. I see. Okay. They don't um, grant administration. I'm, I'm fine with LEDC yeah. doing it. I just don't want to lose track of the rest of the piece of, and you weren't on that call, so you don't know exactly what was said probably, but but we did have some additional concerns about whether else LEDC wanted to be able to hire LCPC yes. to do some aspects of that. We have a call with, so we have a call with Northern Borders about that aspect of it. Okay. So there is still open discussion about 
um, assistance in administration functions and creation of reports and all of that. Okay. So that is still with us to resolve with Christie and company. I don't remember when that meeting is. It's this week sometime. Um, and separately, we still need L LEDC to be our LDD. LDD. And the, the funding for this will come out of our northern, it's part of our northern borders administrative fees. We'll pay for it, the amount listed in this. Does that pay for the amount, or is this part of our income contribution? That's a straight pass through to LEDC at 2%? 2%, yeah. Okay. yeah. We're granted at 2%. Percent of the grant award, yes. So we're not in the middle of that. So it's, it, 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 in essence, it's covered under the grant. There's no direct cost to the town. What I think is less clear is the next piece, yeah. the assistance piece. And that question will be answered. And LED, DC, like, that's not why we were talking to LED. Was not for them to assist us. Right. Our choices really were LEDC or the Northern or Northern. Yeah. yeah, it's essentially the Northwest Planning Commission, but it's it's, it's a Southern southern development, economic development. development. LED. LED. All right. So, are we authorizing Tom or the chair? I think we should stay consistent. And authorize me in this case. All right, motion to authorize select board chair to sign. Hang on, Donna. General contract for services with LEDC. I can just do it electronically. Yeah. Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's have it. Okay, now for the fun stuff. Uh, hey, no, 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 stay. What? We're you starting budget that? conversations. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right out. <laughs> you want to take one of these for nighttime reading? No. <laughs> uh, did you make any any changes to anything on that? No, that actually came from Rosemary. Yeah, this is last year's. This is last year's. Oh, this is last year's? This year's. Oh, okay. Printout is last oh, year's. Okay. Wait a minute. How do we know it's last year's? What about this? Where's what about the 11 by 17 sheets? But it has the, it has the comments from last year. year's. Oh, oh, yeah. What's the big one? This is the one that came from you. Yeah, that's, that's last year's year. approved budget. This is current, current year. year. Current year. Okay. Yes. So these okay. values are not in soft copy. So we don't have an actual printed copy of what you sent us on the... No, because it was an enormous amount. Uh, it was like 44 pages, and that's that's when I called Rosemary and said, hey, I need help. Um, yeah. Oh, look, everybody has their computer. We should take a picture. <laughs> uh, I should sit next to Rosemary, but aren't you going to see? We can sit us next to her. Well, let's give Beth a high five because I know I did. I don't even want that. It's just going to scratch your head. High five. I don't have great faith. Um, I'm going to show you the screen on Wi Fi here. It's just asking me to read. So, this is the budget status report. If anyone wants to join the Zoom, you can see my screen from the Zoom. Shouldn't the nice. columns V and W be 24, 25 proposed? That's... This hold. Are you saying I did something wrong? Probably yes. Likely. No, I'm not saying that. Yes, I they should. I didn't say that. I just suggested that maybe the heading should be different. It's confusing to me. No, 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 it's wrong. Yeah. Yes. Thanks a lot, Tom. <laughs> okay, I didn't do this one, didn't I tell you? Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. 
There's okay. also so many years. So many. Yes. So, our current year, I literally just took our current year and mapped it over to our draft, to our, to our proposed. I'm sorry. So you cut and paste everything in the proposed budget from current to 24, 24? Yep. Okay. Except. Except the subtotals. For some reason, they have some. And Tom, you said you did the the year to date column was based on a Nemeric? Um, that's from the CSP I gave. Yeah, I just, I just pulled the year to date. So that'll be five. It's from that combined file. Four months. Take the combined file and it's only four months, right? Everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Four months in. So yeah. thirty-three percent. Well, three. Of a little bit of October. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty percent. So when we get to the. Final, final, we'll have six months of actuals. Yeah. Which were. I think we should use, I think we need to do end of year projections now that we're a third of the way through because, like, looking at. Everyone has a subtotal version up, right? Yeah, okay. Um, what do you mean? I have your version up. Do you guys have a subtotal version? What do you mean subtotal? Okay, you don't, you don't have the subtotal version. Yeah, the, no. I don't know why you don't have the version. Okay. It's okay. Um, it's okay. So when you look at dog licenses, sorry, look, when you look at revenue from law enforcement, for example, uh, which is 5610. About zero and I. I don't know my numbers. I have subtotals on. Hold it. Hold my number. Hold on. Twenty on ours is driveway permits. Twenty on ours is revenue from law enforcement. Oh, because you're on this, you're, but you're, this you're, you're is really different. Yeah. I know because my computer hates this Wi-Fi. Mark, you want to come sit next to me? No, I'm fine. Did you get a text? I did get a text. And it didn't work. Well, it didn't work on my computer, though. Okay. Um, looking at... What do you have for 17? Who's this? I have revenue for law enforcement on 17. Ah. Anyway, so revenue... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, okay. Um, so, like, our revenue is up 113%. That's good. I basically, anything that was up, I basically put conditional formatting, just making sure you have conditional formatting, on the rows that were greater than 100%, both in the revenue and expense column, because um, I just wanted those to pop. So, I just wanted to make sure that we were accounting for things where we'd already spent the full line based on our budget. That's a good trigger. Yeah. Um, and we can add other, like, if it's helpful to have those kinds of, those kinds of uh, conditional formats on, we can add more to that, too. But I think that we should go through, I think we're going to want to go through an exercise of getting our year-end projections up for everything. So if we think we're still at budget and nothing has really changed, we can just copy over our actual budgeted amount, because we think that's where we're going to end for the year. Um, but if I basically just look at the subtotals throughout, meaning um, our total tax, our tax total, um, so 5605 tax related total, we budgeted uh, 2.129. And our actual year to date is 
That's down. Um, what down. line is that? That's not current taxes. That is a combination of all of the five, six, fives. So where the GL code is five, six, five, it's basically. Okay, so it's all of these. Yep. So that's a combination of current taxes, late penalties, tax sale and mediation, interest, <clears throat> and delinquent. You got it. I'd like to pose a, uh, two fundamental questions, which could also be suggestions related, directly related to money. Um, one is related to the budget we're currently in. Um, my question slash suggestion is, since we're only a quarter of the way, a third of the way into our total budget, and we know we're going to be experiencing some loss of revenue from what we anticipate, so we experience some loss of revenue from taxes, should we send out a memo to all the departments saying we would like you to try to reduce your overall tax supported portion of your budget by X percent? Your net? Increase your net by well, in some cases, like the Historical Society only receives $3,000 of town taxpayer funding. That's so not a very small portion of their total budget. The Historic Society receives considerably more than that. When you add up all the lines of expense and all the lines of revenue. But those expenses are under our, under our yeah, budget. Yeah, so we're so using tax money and putting it in different lines. We yeah, are, but, but I know. My personal <coughs> point being that, you know, some of those we could say $3,800, it's a lot closer to 11000 or a greater of actual taxpayer money. We can argue that. My question is, do we want to send out some sort of memo to departments yes. saying that we would like you to consider ways that you can save money? I want to, yes. And I want it to be about net spend and net spend within our budget, very specific. Because I think we need to be very specific about what our ask is. I do not want to ask anyone to um, cut their expenses by a percentage because that's only half of the equation. If they can raise more money to contribute to the budget and create their net as a net savings of X percent, fine. That's cool. You can spend exactly the same amount you've always spent, but you're raising more of it in revenue. <clears throat> I agree that net is, net is really where we I think have it's, to be Yeah, if it was articulated well, because you can't just say net to, to all committees. You'd have to kind of say, you guys are saying the same thing. But I don't know if everybody sees it. It has to result like, in savings. If we can word it so that it says just, that it results in savings to our budget. Yeah, Duncan said tax-related spending. Right, which is the same you're saying. I'm planning meetings with each department head. I've already talked to Jason and Dean, and I think I, I can meet with each committee, and I can just take the budget. This is pretty straightforward. You know, all the 56s are revenues, and then the 57s are the expenses. And just, you, if you say what you want them to cut, we can compare the two, and I say, I can give them the option to raise or lower, but then I can have those one-on-one -on -one conversations to explain where that change has to happen. The change has to happen, how they do it is up to them and, and up to the board. I think it's important that if they're going to say they're raising revenue, that they have a strong business case on how they're going to prove that revenue increase. And if they don't, they need to have a statement on what they're going to do if they don't raise that revenue as Tim, part of it. Tom, are you saying that if we that if we sit here tonight and say we need to cut net three percent, you can you can um, run numbers and go to Jason, go to Rack, go to everybody and say, Jason, you got absolutely fifty-seven thousand dollars. You got to have less. In Rack, you got to have 
how I used to do the budget was the same way as I'd go to each department. Say highway, right? The yeah. largest portion of the municipal is mostly highway. Yeah. Highway yeah. has no ability to increase revenue. They so, don't. Well, you know, just but they, they do. They do. But, grants. Yeah. They did a bunch well, of grant work on on Ben Overhill. Well, let's talk maybe we use recreation. And say so you say, okay, Dean, here's your expenses. What here? This is what this is what you projected. This is the actual. How much of this? I know it was your first year. How much of this was pie in the sky? How much of this didn't get done? And how much of this is we fall we fell short? And just go line by line. And then you do the same thing with the revenue side and say, well, why did we fall short? Why did you over exceed? Can you was it were we lucky or is this an opportunity to do it again? Is there an opportunity that you saw for a revenue that didn't happen, and maybe now you know your schedule better that you can tackle? Right. And Gymnastics. Just, and just you just go one, two, three, like with each, literally line by line, and if you if you do it on the if you pull your budget status report, you have them hand write their best wishes, and then you do a five year projection for plans, so projections above cost of living increases, and then that way the board can see this line by line, they'll come to you with their best face forward, and then, then you can ask those hard questions at the next meeting, and then I go back and say, okay, these are the hard questions, what can you do better? I'm, I'm all in favor of that approach, do what you need to do. My, my question ultimately is, if we're going to do a net, which probably makes some sense, what do we want to set for a target for reductions? 15%. So we're asking for a starting number. I threw it out. There's one. We don't have to like. 20? What do we need? I wasn't going to go that high. What I was thinking more like 10. Okay, what we have we spent $251,000 so far in flood expenses. Unreimbursable. And we've had $10,000 in grants against that. So um, $242,000 essentially. Rosemary. Uh, do you have other flooding? Oh, the school tax. Um, but 90% so of that is going to be reimbursed. 92, right? 92 and a half. Yeah. I'm not thinking about our budget as, like, I'm thinking about as cash flow. Like, how do we stay positive in cash flow? Or how can we help ourselves? That's a separate question from my question, which is what should we ask people to target for? I know I'm working for that. Budgets. I don't think we should just pick a number from thin air like Evan is doing. I think we should have some rationale behind it. I agree. And for me, the rationale is our, unexpen our unexpected expenses are flood related. So we know what our cut spend is for flood related expenses so far. Do we have any other unexpected expenses that are large? So you're saying that, depends on how you look at it, right? So we've already spent 10% of our targeted tax revenue on flood expenses, and we know that that will, at the very least, double, which will be 20%. Yeah. But in theory, on paper, we'll get 92.5% of that back, so are we really only spending, but, which, by the way, would only represent, what, 1% of our budget? Represent one penny if we lost $20,000 because of the flood, 22000 mm -hmm. So really, if we're targeting it on what we're getting back, we need to ask them to cut 1%. I was going to suggest too. But we're already expecting to be out of pocket 20% for a, hopefully a shortish period of time that, with having other grants that come up that affect right. cash flow. And then if I were sitting in the, one of these departments, I'd say, well, oh, spend some ARPA money. Don't make me cut. Mm -hmm. I think there's been some requests for ARPA money. Yeah, so yeah. The ARPA money's already gone. The board. The board decided to move it to the general ledger and the general fund, so. Which is, is going that to create a huge our, surplus this year. That isn't applied to our jail right now, though. So when you say it's already gone, we, we pushed it into our, our budget. We haven't spent it, though. Or if no, we have, no, I, it's got to show up as a top. How much, how much are we pushing to? Well, if you remember, to 3000 for uh, 50000 for the fiber net. 50 for the fiber net and 50 for the engineering. Yeah. And plus we have Northern Borders. Plus Northern Borders grant commitment, which will be less if we get an EDA grant. 
but a fair amount of the ARPA money has been designated. I would, I, would, I would like a better description than fair amount. I would like. You, you actually want to know what the dollar amount is? Big. Within didn't, give or take twenty. Didn't we do this exercise and there was like fifty eight thousand dollars of on committed? I that I don't know. That in your mind is much sharper at this than that. Is that in a separate account? Is that a separate bank account or is it on the balance sheet? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. But we Rose are using well, that like now to, to pay down expenses, right? Yeah. Okay. I would like to actually do what they're talking about and spend some, maybe you and Tom actually even could spend some time and link. Well, we need to get it into the GL, but at some point, and I have a question about that, but at some point link the budget using our current GL, our current um, budget report. That's what's feeding into this. So we should always feed the most recent into this <coughs> Excel file that we're using for budgeting. Um, but I'd like to link all of that out to actual cash, to that cash on hand sheet you have, and link it to what we actually have on hand versus what um, we have outstanding, so what we don't actually have in-house, but we are owed. Like, I'd like to get them all linked so we can see that cash flow when we're talking about these things, because I think it'll help when we're talking about like how much ARPA money do we have in our budget now, like came in, that we haven't spent other than spending on general cash flow items, and it'll help with like skate, those skate park discussions where we talk about like how much money is there actually allocated to state, uh, skate park, for example. Do you know off the top of your head what we all committed? Flying way out in the field? Well, like how much is for a lot. It's like 300 and 400. I'll just speak a little yeah, softer. Yeah. I wouldn't even have to be here. If we have the softest speaking group between Rosemary and Duncan, everything promise. I can hear you, but <laughs> you can't hear us. I'm very offended. Really? <laughs> or 10. Thomas and Rosemary are at the bottom. They're at a decibel what? 20. I, I sometimes have a hard time hearing Thomas. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. I, I have a hard time hearing almost everybody down here. In fact, I was thinking I probably should move over there. Oh. I'm sure there's a good place well, to plug in over there. Thank you for coming to my defense, our, our old ears. Uh, um, my brother. I, we digress. I'm sorry I even brought that up, but I was not catching a lot of it. So, to get back to the original question, I don't think cash flow wise it would be a bad idea to request more in cost savings for this year. I understand it's going to be painful uh, but at best case in a fairy tale land if we got the municipal building and library redone we're still looking at Somewhere, my guess is around six hundred thousand dollars. No, sixty thousand. Sorry, that we're gonna have to pick up. Well, you also have the building and grounds. No. Huh? You also have the buildings and ground reserve fund to get money from, which is about hundred thousand dollars. What? All right. I mean, are we are we proposing to pull from building and grounds reserves and build those up over the years, or are we gonna try to make up for the pain point? this year so that we're better poised for future select boards. Some of that might get taken up in the roof repairs and the tower repairs too. But, we, but not that much. I mean, I don't think that's a $10,000 job. I'd like to think so, but I don't. It might be $10,000 the town share. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What happened? Yeah. What? I think Ryan was figuring on 30. So well, fifteen thousand our share. What happens when that parking lot needs to be repaved? Well, when it already it's does, preferred. it's literally got a pool in it. Could we strategize a little bit with the cash flow? We have um, feels typically not. <laughs> I don't, so in my mind, we're spending large pots of money everywhere. 
And I think, is it possible to hold off on spending in DRC and... We already this? spent the MDRC. It's in our... Oh, it's been in DRC. Okay. The, uh, yep. the stormwater grant, PDC grant. Mm -hmm. That's 600000 Putting that off till July, till July 1, if we start, like do the engineering, but if we plan construction on next fiscal year, let me make it a goal to complete and get reimbursement for FEMA. Say the target date for completion of construction is March 1st, and then we can do, that'll give us four months to complete, get the money back, and then we'll know where we'll stand before the end of the year, rather than, it feels like we're just like grabbing. Tom, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you insert a uh, year-end projection for fiscal year 26? But we don't even know what the... And put the cost in there so that we can look at that with an inserted line. We don't know what the timeline for that reimbursement is. And, I mean, we'll be lucky to have the work done by then anyways, but that's really just kicking the can down the road for next year's select board, which Mark might like. No, he's got another year. Yeah, oh. I think, I think if we finish FEMA in this fiscal year, like if we actually get the work done and we get reimbursed, a lot of, there's going to be a lot of administrative costs that's already covered in the bid budget that FEMA's going to pay for, and there's a lot of um, forced account, all the town crew work, in those first few days and the continued town crew work for cleaning up at the skate park, all of that is money that we're gonna get paid for. And so if we're only right now we spent two hundred and fifty two thousand, it's only gonna cost the town fifteen thousand. If we add another five hundred thousand to this, that's gonna push us to about forty five thousand out, right? Fifteen for two fifty two. After full female reimbursement. Correct. Where are you getting the is that the eight point something percent? This is just um, on the ratio where we're at now of, of what plan on 92.5% reimbursement. But uh, continue on. I like where you're headed. And so, if we know that, say we spend 750,000, and we know we're going to have to, that's about we'll say 70,000 out of pocket. And of that 70,000, part of this process to complete FEMA is like let's go grab those grants. We know there's two that have reached out to us in the last week alone. One is five to fifteen thousand for the community engagement. The municipal building fits that, and then the other, um, and the library is also eligible for their own grant for that same Vermont Humanities. So the town and the library, so the town can get two grants from the humanities for the two different buildings. And then there's that most recent grant that came through today that I actually I didn't read. I kind of it looked like an ad to me. I didn't even see what it was. I think it's an ad. I felt it was like okay. It's an ad. Yeah. Scam, an ad. I was just like, all right, so <laughs> this is all right. You know, was, but I think if we we could, I think we could also. The guy's email address was Ontario. Oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I got that too. I, that's, that's, that's an ad. Let's, let's tell them, keep going. Right? But here, so here, there's here. a point Eight there where it's like, I think if we could, if we know better what our target is for just FEMA, we'll be able to raise for just FEMA too. So then we know our offset is 50,000 reduced spending by X percent for the rest of the year, to your point, right? Like, okay, let's do a cash flow spending, like just as needed purchases only, you know, or reduce that plan purchases number down so the select board makes more decisions and less in-house decisions. Um, and I think we can reduce that total loss of a, a loss from the flood to below 30,000 or, or less even because of the grants and then because of better spending now, being conservative and really pushing a team effort, hey, we got to get through this. But then going into July 1, we should be on track, maybe with no, no, maybe we'll have unexpected funds, but maybe we'll have no, um, we'll have no deficit, so that way those stormwater grants and the MBRC program can like move forward with a clean slate. And I, I, when do you expect that we'll get our first email check? Uh, I've heard anywhere from two to four weeks. About weeks? Oh. But I, I actually... How much do we expect for that first check? Um, I think we have to put in, it would be of the, well, it would be for each site, each DI, if you will, and there's nine DIs, and so this would be, we would have to go through each one and say, are you 100 all the roads, 
are going to be part of those first few eyes. And what about the dumpsters in the town crew work? That's still up for debate. Um, I, I don't. I, I don't know how much of that is open and closed. What do you mean up for debate? I mean it was a direct flood expense. Yeah, there's. I, that's a wrong word. I, I misspoke. I think as far as um, how much of it is eligible for FEMA or not, and I. I have to be with Ron, and I've been building folders for each of those nine PIs. So every road site, and every building site, and every cost incurred by the town. Every dumpster and every hour of the road crew work. Exactly. You know, that's all the pre-management. Yep. So, yeah, it's all, it's all there, but we have to pull it all together, pull all the time cards together. And so it's like, what that total number is, we don't, I don't think we have our fingers on yet. Okay, but I think, I mean, isn't part of Ron's purpose in our world to make sure all of this fits into the FEMA puzzle? Absolutely. I, it it fits into the FEMA puzzle. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. exactly was my feeling when we brought him on board, is to guide us. He's been invaluable. He really has. And so okay. he's, but I think there's a lot of parts to that first debris management days that I think are still being collected. Well, I haven't seen that close it's out. It's very right. disconcerting when you say that it's up. Those dumpsters are not up for debate. Let's, re let's redact that statement. Debate was a bad word. Sorry. Yeah. So if we don't get fully reimbursed for those, we could be on the hook for another 59000 Right. And so I guess we can't be on the hook. Every town that's been flooded in the state has got disposal of the problems. They also to waited two weeks to do anything about it. Yes, if you sit on your ass, the state will take care of it for you. They literally waited two weeks. I, I sat back when they like crazy the first week. I didn't um, see any of it. Yeah. <laughs> on, on dumpsters. So till, till the town brought their dumpsters in, and I was already too late for me. One thing that's going to be very beneficial is because we're putting all this work now into the RFPs and the process, the final decision for payout comes to a program called CRT, and that's like a final audit to check every step. And if we, because we're checking all the boxes, CRT should go through smoothly. But every delay could be a month, it could be six weeks. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, okay, I I am definitely not a best case scenario planner when it comes to waiting for the federal government government. I am definitely a worst case planner and I agree with Evan. I think we should not count on being reimbursed for debris removal at all. Just to be safe. And What's hopefully we followed enough of the steps that we are covered, but we don't know that right now. If we plan bad and we end up with a larger surplus it's all going to go back to the taxpayers and yeah uh, no, I, they could be mad at us for having I just want I just want to pick a rational cut number I agree which is why I still want to talk about like what do we realistically think we're going to get in for revenue that we weren't planning for and what are we realistically going to be spending that we are confident will cover us so that we don't get in trouble with cash flow and, I, and I'd, I'd like to do some calculations. No, to no, you've been getting quite about cash flow. Do you have any worries about cash flow? Right now, I don't think the next school is falling up. Which is seven hundred thousand dollars. Which is doing what? End of November. End of November. What? Is There's definitely not school. school. Yeah. Our tax anticipation fund. That's. Definitely not going to cover that, but no. is that still whole, or did we use that for the sheriff's department? And then um, go are we going to ask the sheriff's department to cut their budget? I may be on that one. Yeah, I think we should ask everybody. I think we should ask everybody. Yeah. That would be them, everybody. So what's a realistic number? If you could really get it out of the whole budget, 5% would make us look glorious. I don't know why you're just picking, wait, why are you picking 5%? Because 
if we didn't get reimbursed for trash, and we were out 45000 for, you know, Tom's calculation, that would be, what is that, Rosemary? Three point something What did percent. you say for, just for? 59000 for trash, 45000 for Tom. Or for it's 104. People, right, so that's what percentage of $2 million? Wow, it added up, didn't it? The one caveat I will say is I I do not trust federal reimbursement to be timely. But I would hope that Ron would get us across the line before July 1. Here's what I'm afraid of is we've heard from every resident how hard it's been with the process. Appeal after appeal after appeal. I'm not. I'm not worried about that. Though. If we don't get reimbursed before July one, we'll book it as anticipated revenue. As long as we've got a reasonable expectation of what the number is. Yeah. Uh, I, that doesn't bother me. Going from one budget year to another. Vote is in March. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the actual budget wasn't wasn't that much. Yeah. You got it on that sheet. Our tax rate increase was four cents. Two point four percent. Two point four. Why did you say two percent? Because I was looking at the, I was trying to look at the costs alone that we had spent so far. Mm -hmm. I was just doing, I don't know. I was just doing no, a number out there. Curious. Because we had spent two hundred fifty thousand already. That's why. Yeah. You'd say five percent, and then anything less than five or increased, just provide an explanation. That way, and we can track it during the course of the year too. If yeah. we're if we're seeing less savings than we think we're going to need, I really like the idea of the blanket statement to reduce the rest of this year. Um, I think that kind of working around building camaraderie to get through this period where we're going to have some trouble. Um, and rather than going department to department, is, is that would you guys consider like a Let's hold off on unnecessary purchases, or uh, I don't know. I would leave it up to the committees to yeah. say how they think. You know, I I think well, our responsibility is given It's us too, right? right? Like it's not just committees; it's us too. Yeah, absolutely. So it's department heads, committees, us. Yeah. Select board salaries. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would probably change the budget holding mark. Okay. <laughs> we could just oh, we could, oh, 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 one percent. We're squeezing down five percent or whatever, whatever we're getting. We could do that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay with that. Everybody wants to spread the pain. I've. <clears throat> you know what? I'm gonna take it. <laughs> and then donate it. Yeah. Okay. The amount of time you, you invest spent you deserve my pay. I wonder how much she thinks. <laughs> I think I we're overthinking it. I think we should just say 5%, keep track of it during the course of the year. We can react in real time if we need to. Um, I agree, but we need to look at some of the, our own expenses that fall into the select board expenses. For example, Rosemary asking your opinion on this, but do we need to mail out the town reports? Can we just have them? We don't have to. Yeah, we could send it, we could have an electronic version, which we already have, and then have them order two cartons for pickup or something like that. How many people do we get at town meeting? I think a lot more people read those things than that are given credit. In your family, I remember sure. one year I asked the board if they wanted to stop the room. I remember. And they were adamant they had to be Yeah. I don't think that, I think that's a big expense. Why do we have to pay it? Like we're saving money, we're saving you money. If you want one, come and grab it. Just we'll it. have them in a few locations. Maybe we can put, maybe or three cartons. Just tell me on a carton. Well, they mail them for us. Oh, they mail over nine hundred. But you get a, you order nine hundred, but you get they a couple get cartons in the. Uh, you get one of left. Less than hundred. So maybe we order two hundred and have them all mailed to the office, or a hundred even. And if there's well, a room. How many people come to town meeting? We're getting way into the weeds here. I know, but I'm just, my point is that, like, if we're going to ask everybody else to, we have to get into the weeds too. And I agree. Those I agree. But, but I don't think that needs to be part of our discussion tonight. At this moment. That's I true. totally agree with you. So that, are we peaceful with 5%? Duncan, are you peaceful? Oh, yeah. I'll make a motion that yeah, we yeah. ask. Do it. Do it. Do it. Beth, are you peaceful with five? You're not. Why? Because you I think we should ask for ten. Uh, I'm fine with five. I mean, they can look at it. Evan loses. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Right. It's weird to vote against it because you think you should actually be. That's okay. Yeah. You haven't been watching Congress lately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, move, I'll move that we ask um, departments to to um, plan a 5% reduction plan or execute a 5% reduction in net expenses. Plan and like execute. execute. Plan and execute. Plan and, and execute. Yeah. Um, a reduction of 5% in net, in net expenses. 
right. in the current budget year. In the current, but for for this existing budget year. Now through July one. Yep. Now through July one. Oh, second. And when you say departments, you mean like committees also? Yes, I I mean I'm ready to to go to the sheriff's department. Either. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, well, we have we, you know we have budget categories. So. Yeah. We have a signed contract, and well, we could ask. Yes. And we keep talking about committees, but it's a drop in the bucket compared to emergency services. I totally understand. We should all feel it, but emergency. there's a motion anyways. Yeah, yeah, that category of the budget is 27% of our total budget. Yeah, now I have graphs. Exactly. <laughs> You'll see them again. Uh, I think we're getting closer to asking for 10. No, we're not. <clears throat> 10 is just hurting our community more. It's not hurting our budget. Like, 10 is not a significant enough amount. I know it's double what we're asking, but like we're talking about <clears throat> hurting the things that make our community run if we're cutting 10%. That's a big cut. Well, we're cutting 10% in net. Yeah. But, I mean, if we hit that $50,000 projection in abatements, if the Board of Abatement makes that, we're going to be coming back with 7.5% two months from now. Yeah. We could, we're going to have to be creative Could you no improve it to 7.5% mark? Uh, I want to stay with 5 right now. Knowing that it's a shortfall. A potential shortfall. If the numbers work out, it is. I, I go back to my comment that we can track this in real time, and we could make it if we find one. It may not snow this winter. <clears throat> we, don't, we haven't had a frost yet. You never know. Yeah, I mean, we could have a really light. We could have another really light mud season. We have one. Yeah. My comment to myself. On that one. We could spend seventy grand in one week next okay. year in mud season. We could. Yep. So if we had a little bit extra. I just up yesterday to find out whether the river was going to flood. As I was watching it come up and up and up. Madam Chair, we have a motion and a second on the on Who seconded? Did you second? Okay. Yes. All right. All those Aye. in favor? Aye. You're not in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Opposed? Nay. Donna? <laughs> For the record. I've been only one to cut 1%. Right, I hate to do what? this, but the other question I had was, um, Question suggestion was, do we want to set a target for this year for the budget in terms of a total? We don't want to exceed net three percent on the budget for net one. Going into the next year, you mean for planning for the next budget? Is for it's a budget we're about to go into. Do we want to set targets? And if we do, we should let the departments also know that we would like them to limit their budget increases or budget requests to whatever target we set. Well, the film, a lot of that's out of our control. I mean, health insurance is going to come in at 12? 11.5. Uh, yeah. But I mean... But there are other, I mean, uh, uh, the reason I bring this up is that's the way we used to do budgets. We set a, a target um, for net, you know, the net budget. That's what we do at the co-op. We say, yeah. Well, and I don't think it's a bad thing. You know, we may not get there. We, we may, if we set a target of three and we have a good four, and we're all happy with that, great. But if we at least set a target to aim for, it gives, I think, everybody an opportunity to get you know, that we're serious about budgeting. And I think in this year in particular, I, we, we need to be. I don't like the word target. What would you prefer? Goal? Shot in the dark. Goal. No, no, a goal <laughs> sounds just as bad as a target, but like a hope and prayer. an ideal not to exceed number or something. Like saying that we're going to target 4% just seems targeting it's not great. If we said don't go over 4%, if you do have reasons, that's one thing. I think that, I, I don't think that this is a number we have to take tonight. We might as well. 
No. Well, I think it's pertinent to. Uh, I need to think about it because I disagree that we should do it tonight. Really? I want to yep. know from Thomas: Are you comfortable with what just passed this five percent reduction? Do you feel like you have um, a sense of how you're going to approach folks with me with me clear message about what net expense is from the select board? Yeah, I I think it's going to be. I'm really excited to actually. Be, no, I, I. There's a method to the madness, you know. You, I used to do it on paper. You take this piece of paper and they write the new numbers next to it. Mm -hmm. And you go right in. Nemeric has this really cool feature, budget maintenance. And you can put in next year's numbers, hit print on the report, and it tells you the percent increase. So we can daydream every two weeks, you keep daydreaming and changing those numbers until you hit your, your target. You say, okay. We know the cost of living increase last year was 8.7 percent, but we also know the one before was 5.6 percent. What do we do? This year's estimated at 3.5. So. Exactly. So let's split the difference and say that no more. Let's try to do our residents a favor and not do half of the 8 percent is in this the next budget and half of the 3 percent is in the next budget. And so, you know, let's shoot for 5 percent increase no more. Or let's shoot for 5 percent decrease no more. You know what I really like. I'd really like for as many of our committees as possible to be net zero. That would be lovely. Yeah. For next year. As close to net zero as you could possibly get. Yep. In community. We certainly had some years where the economy was in the tank and we we shot for a zero percent increase in the budget. No, I, I understand that. It just means um, I'm talking about community. I just sit here and look at yeah. how much of our budget is out of our I'm not talking about everything. I'm talking about committees. Okay. Committees, committees like, if I would like to see committees who have the responsibility of trying to be net zero. I, I second that. I think that's a great idea for committees. I think, they I can, think it I think is to the extent good. that the committees don't have salary and benefits to deal with, and the library, I think, is a little different in that regard. Well, so it's right. So I mean, Dean is a salary person. But Dean is, but they're wrapped into our Dean salary. Is, Dean is on the so the salary is not part of the committee, the okay. rec line. Thank you. But it is so rec line. expenses are supplies, refs, those kinds of things. And rec revenue is any donations or events that they help um, facilitate or registration fees. I think the library would be the only one that has salary and benefits in their own their, within their budget. I think when I if I sit down with Kelly and the library, would it be okay if I just speak up? Oh. <laughs> and okay if I sit down with them and just kind of exclude those two as that's gonna come as probably part of a separate discussion, the salaries and benefits. Well the library expenses are like they have their own money too, so it gets complicated. But the net will still be, we can still work at, you know. We can work on the non salary lines yep. to become net zero. And I'll just leave salary if that's out for now. Um, yep. Rosemary, do we, there is something around um, library expenses that we had a question about. What was that? about revenue coming in from the work that they asked for. They had their account and they were going to use they were going to use some of their funding out of their account. They were bring it into our um, they did bring it in yeah. at the end of last that was year. For that's the, why the, rest the installation. The installation. Right. Cool. So I guess that's a homework thing. The 12 month, 12 month average CPIU for Northeastern makes me think that we could shoot for a lower percentage number than we've seen in the last two years. So far, messaging to committees is we'd like them to be net zero if at all possible. That might negate the need for the net reduction. No, because the net reduction is this year. Or he's talking about looking for next year. For next year. Okay, I mean, right. for clarity, isn't there only two committees that are level funded? 
uh, TNL. Yeah, and community oven. Yeah. Well, those are no taxpayer dollars. Yeah, that's what I mean by level funded, I guess. Yeah. In this instance, yeah, in different contexts, I mean, different things, but every other committee well, receives tax revenue. Skateboard gets funding from the government. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking it about self self funded. In oh, yeah, okay. level funded was the wrong word. Sorry. Self funded, no taxpayer revenue. I think every committee. And the updated file that I'm sharing on Zoom right now, um, it actually has subtotals, and the subtotals link out from the revenue to the expense. Like you can click on the thing and jump to compare. Okay. I think it's been a good productive meeting. Do you we, have any we more stumbling questions? A clear message. The last two have been real good ones. So, um, well, really I, think, I think they'll help us develop a budget reduction so, this year, next year's budget. To be level funded, yeah, net net zero increase. Yeah, and yeah, five percent is a net net cut. Can we can as you suggest? You know, things like healthcare are not really in union union well, salaries and contracts. They're not really within our snowfall. control. Snowfall isn't really in our control. Either. Yes, it is. Oh, yes. okay. It's well, not, we, but we've we got, we at least have five-year rolling averages that we can look at for those items yeah. that give us a reasonable expectation. And, you know, to that point, there's also our response. You know, I mean, we could cut our, you know, we're going we're gonna to hear about it from members of the public, but if we say, you know, you can't go out until 6 o'clock in the morning and we're done at midnight. You know, that's that's a way that we could help lower the budget, but well, there's no point in telling them they can't go out until six o'clock in the morning when I'm getting down with the weeds. Well, we've got some unions. And their union contract there. starts at three thirty in the winter. Something like that. Close to that. Yeah. 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 All the time when they're earning overtime hours is when you see them in the afternoon. It's not the morning. But anyways, I, your point is well taken, Duncan. And um, for the record, that's a hypothetical. Yeah. Because right. I can see this spreading across the universe right now, and you will promptly be replaced. You can see blood, <laughs> blood on the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, the front page of the newspaper Thursday. Oh, yeah. Johnson cuts small removal service. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You might as well throw away the eliminate APDs and hunting and a few other things. Right. <laughs> Just be done with our lives. That would be a lively one. Okay. So, could we give homework? To mm ourselves. -hmm. Give it all you want. If we want to set a ideal not to exceed limit on the budget. We're just going to call it an objective or a goal. Which would you prefer? Or I am not going to set okay, whatever. a goal to hit a number. That's what I would say. But Did those things all, they don't necessarily mean that you hit. I mean, a goal is two points this way and two points that way. <clears throat> Evan wants to be able to, five years from now, say that we <laughs> didn't hit be $5 within the... No, no, because if you go to if you go to is this the last committees and departments and you say that our goal is four yes. percent, I believe certain committees have said in the past that their we're, goal is to spend all right. the money in their budget. Yes. They're gonna hit that. Yes. That's, that's their goal. Good. Good. That's not like a we're trying to be financially responsible. Well, we don't want to see this. You are gonna say so like board wants us to hit four percent. That's what we're talking about this year or next year. I'm talking about next year. Next the year cut this year I'm past. Next year we're asking committees to work for it next year. I love that. So, so we're we're afraid overall budget goal. Example. Yeah, I mean, I think I think us having an overall budget goal is not a bad idea either. But yeah. Um, yeah. I like it. I like it to be called the not what fifteen or twenty percent. <laughs> it's always good to be. <laughs> We need a nearby town increasing the tax rate 15 percent. Oh my god, I was so proud of our budget last year. Um, 30 percent. 
So to the point that we had earlier, really the big spending items are not things that we typically have a whole lot of control over. They're salaries and benefits, and they are services. Emergencies. Services. They're not our spends. Right. They're somebody else's spend. Right. It's like the federal budget, really, the state right. budget, you know. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, 80%. <laughs> when we take when you know those increases, we can use the items that are near control to identify savings. And some of them might be policy driven. Some of them might only no patrols. Well, we can say, I don't what see any say? reason why we can't ask the Monroe County Sheriff and the Fire Department and NEMS to target a no more than X percent increase. Three percent. No, I'm a single person. That's not what the board decided. I throw things out there all the time. Most the time they bounce back. Because I'm hearing, I'm hearing Mark say one. <laughs> I don't hear anything in this room most of the time. <laughs> I'm sure I didn't say one. All right, this has been great, so we'll come back with that one the next meeting. So Tom's going to come back with an attempt at year end. I'm going to pull next. I did not. I had that in house. Year end productions? Yep. When's, when's going to be our next dedicated budget meeting? Never. <laughs> We may not get there with all the damn meetings. We have four meetings in We're November, back on regular schedule now. No, this is our last non-regular meeting. All right. So my suggestion is... Except that we have first, now we have every single Tuesday uh, yeah. abatement, every yeah. other Tuesday yeah. abatement. So let's fill your schedule. My suggestion is we have a joint do meeting. as much of our work meetings. as we can on the first part of the meeting and dedicate the as much of the third Monday meeting as possible to budget. That would be lovely. I just don't know. But sure, you try. Have we ever done that? No. In the history of our I've never seen plan. it. Well, it's a goal. It, it's a goal. At, at, at one point in time, the board actually met once a month. And then we had a work session meeting. I'll second that motion. <laughs> And especially during budget season, you know, we had, and we did nothing but budget. We had session. budget meetings the last two years that were just budget meetings through November, a little bit in December and January. Yeah. But there were, this, this will not be like last year. The like, warning needs yeah. to be in, what, January 1? No, as well as the budget. Or yeah, we need to have it That's before the, the books need to be printed. Right, yeah, before the books are printed. And that's January 20th, isn't it? We talked about this last time we met. Yeah, we need we to have our budget finalized by mid-January, like snack in the middle, because it gives time to fix errors if there are errors. And it's like a week after that that everything's due to Rosemary. So we need to target the fifth one around the fifth. In the past, one thing that I've done that work sessions similar with um, in that case it was a three member board, so it was just the chair and um, that the best could be. when I went to all the department heads and got their best uh, budget, then the chair met with them and asked the, the initial questions and then it kind of got some and it left, left a big list of questions to answer. So when the when we met with the full board, instead of being kind of a round table discussion, it was tuned into like uh, chair driven questions for the rest of the board. This is this is what we found, this is what we you know, it sounds incredibly I can't do that. efficient. I like it. And then yeah, for you. you it's like, efficient efficient for you. But you know, it could, it could actually be anybody <laughs> as a, a chair. Uh, any one of Mark, the five I nominate two. Mark. <laughs> yeah. This just happened to be the chair, but it was you know, it could be any two people to just sit down. And it, a lot of the 
the budget is cost of doing business, there's no control over it. And it, it kind of narrows those out of the way and puts those numbers in. And then you get left with those big questions for, for the round table. And then when that's all done, then you kind of can go back and get all five on board to where you started at the yeah. beginning, actually, go through that. Well, it'd be nice to be able to do this and eliminate most of this. It's already set in concrete. Where, where do we have that we can actually influence? Yeah, I think that I agree. We should probably just go section by section and talk about who owns what. Um, well, do we have to do that? Or can I, I mean, no, I, like, I mean, like, like, I can just talk to Tom about it. Okay. I was going to plan, just so I got it right for next meeting, is I'm going to ask everybody for a 5% reduction on the current year. A net zero for everybody next year. Well, that's so that five percent reduction is a net reduction, and if they have a revenue increase, they need to have a plan for that revenue increase. Net yeah, plan, and then added to that, I was going to, in that same conversation with everybody, try to build year-end projections, and then also next year's uh, net zero. So we'll have some big net bubble, a lot of it. The bulk of it should be put together, and that should be done in two, in that time in the next two weeks. That would be really helpful, or November 6th. I feel like doing it all separately is going to be a lot. Maybe trying to get chair, committee chairs in a room, like on a Zoom, yep. and getting the department heads, or the per anyone, the department you, heads in a room. You feel like you, you've got a message from us, you understand the reasoning behind this deduction. Yeah. 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 The cost overruns, the variables that we do not know, the two largest or whatever. Or FEMA. Abatement, and then FEMA. FEMA. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I think that's so important that people understand that it isn't just Evan. We're not just yeah, doing it because Evan wants to. Well, I, mean, I, I think the abatement is the, it's the single largest. Seth and Ed hanging up right now. Wild card, right? Sounds terrible. Yeah, they are. Yeah, okay. That I, I Well, the it's, perception it's the cost of you of representing us is important to me. The, the, this, these are our people, too. But, you yeah. Know, yeah. I mean, they, they are your people, too. Now. Yeah, they are. There are employees, there are, there are voters, there are citizens. That abatement is like the wild card that I think everyone needs to really wrap their head around. Is yeah. yeah. Our sisters. Yeah. Yeah. The abatement is a big one, and we also don't know what's going to happen with buyouts, yeah. which will probably be in this fiscal year too. Which will affect next, next year's time. Yeah, that'll be next year. The year. state was saying six months ish. Six yeah. months keeps well, I asked business. the question that night, and they said it ain't going to happen. When Stephanie was here. Yeah. yeah, it was two years. Yeah. Oh, she said two years. Oh, oh, oh. I thought it was a longer track. It's a long. Yeah, it's not, it's not going to happen. I don't know how people survive. Yeah. Well, it's a six years. One thing I think that we need to be careful of is that. Anyone who's applying for buyout and expecting buyout is likely to not pay taxes on property they can't live in. So if it takes three years, there's going to be delinquent taxes and no, there's not going to be a revenue until that sale goes through. You know, and so that's if we have 10, 10 places on buyout, we make thirty thousand short every year. I, I I totally agree that you're probably right about that, but how can we budget for that? I don't even think we should try. I think we should be aware of it, Dr. Now. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. I think well, we should these try. Ten places that are moving forward. I think his assumption that they're For not going to pay their property taxes is probably pretty, pretty right on. So you're going to take those ten? You're going to make a universal decision that ten properties aren't going to pay their taxes? No, you're or not deciding. No, you're not deciding no. that. You're budgeting for that. There's a difference. It's an informed, educated. Yes. But they should be paid when the property is sold. Yeah. Right. That's the thing. It's to come out of their it'll, right. it'll be right. budgeted. So it's going to be budgeted as tax revenue. Maybe. But we should 
but you can plan. So how's that any different than we budget for delinquent taxes every year? They're delinquent taxes. It's no, di it's no different than putting in a budget for a n an amount for delinquent taxes. Right. Yeah, we do that. That we're just going to add 10 more we, places. We currently do that. So I don't think we need to do any, we're overcomplicating it. We're overcomplicating it. Don't, don't overcomplicate it. I think you're right, Duncan. I think so too, actually. I think we're overcomplicating it. I think we're just being realistic. We, we already away. budget as for delinquent taxes. I understand that. And we generally have an educated guess on what that will be. And I'm just saying that we have It needs to be increased going into the next year. Yeah. I agree. I don't need to get darker. You are. <laughs> <laughs> That. Are we ready to adjourn? The, well, the other yeah. question I have is, um, if we if we're looking if we're trying to come up with a year end, and we're trying to, to me the way it makes sense to do the year end piece is look at all those things where we're already over budget or over revenue, over expense or over revenue, mm -hmm. and adjust those. But everything else. For the year-end projections, you mean? For the projections, for the year-end projections. But everything else, unless we have good reason to think that we're going to exceed a budget number, be hard. put in the number, put in the number that we've got in the budget. Yep. And what, that's always worked in the past. And what the what? I don't think anyone's saying we wouldn't do that, though. Well, saying we wouldn't do that. But if we're if we're, I'm. I hope you. I hope you're right because if we're thinking about we want to ask everybody to do a five percent reduction yeah. in their net budget, then that could end up being a painful process to try and figure out what that year-end expense versus. That's easy. It's a quick formula. We can have two different projections: one with a reduction and one without, and see what the what the range is. What? But the in, important part of the, that whole exercise is that it determines how much we estimate for year-end surplus, which estimates that's what I was how much we say. put towards reducing taxes. Which last year I didn't agree with, right? Because we were doing like the projections, but we have audited values. It's we're just going like to. we run. Well, we had one last year, didn't we? No. And we're in fiscal year 23. So we had one last year. So we no, we're in fiscal year 24. We're not in 23, we're in 24. We are testing. So, so, so we had one last year. So we're having one done on 23. And we'll have an audited surplus to go from. We won't have an audited surplus on the. We won't have it by the Yeah. I'm counting on large broken agreements. Yeah, good luck. I think it you're, is just, you're just telling me we're going to have 10, 10 reductions. <laughs> but if we have... I, I, how many new okay, are we getting sidetracked again? Yes, we're adjourned. I move we adjourn. We don't do that. I mean, can you can move, but no um, one's... <laughs> <laughs> you're all wrong. <laughs> Did that answer your question? Because like the projections, my first year doing budgeting, I like tried to use them to guess what we should do next year, but that's not the right way to do it. And then the second year, we had used them to determine a surplus, but I don't like that model. I like point out the audited number. I do too, and we're now we're now on an annual audit cycle, right? Mm -hmm. So we we used to be on every other year which made using the audited financials very difficult. So that's why we came up with that estimated year-end piece. But if we're going to do annual audited, we should try and get an annual audited figure that we could use for the budget and use that annual audited figure. We're always going to be a year behind. Right. But if we've got an audited number, we can do away with this whole issue of trying to estimate year end surplus. I a thousand percent I no, disagree with you. No, you're wrong because 
it's I'm working by saying I'm right. No. We, we, it, You're not. There's because... still value to doing year-end projections. Yes. In and of itself, but not for the purposes of That's determining fine. the surplus. surplus. That's fine. I do not like hearing that we shouldn't be doing year-end projections, though. That is fundamentally wrong. We're responsible for the budget, so we should be doing projections all the time. But I, I hear agree, you but for on the, the purpose of, That's fine. Yeah. Yep, that's fine. Great. I look forward to a very simple spreadsheet. Like yeah. 12 things. I can tell you there's a lot of opinionated people in this room. <laughs> it's not going to be simple. This, this is not uh, 12 box. things that um, <laughs> tax income, income, state income, turn it around. Overall expense. Yeah. That's exactly. Okay, we're good. We're within our goal. I can make you a simple I just want, I, I want the spreadsheet that we actually have some influence over. Technically, you have influence over the whole thing. Technically, yes. Practically, no. <laughs> Everybody's ready to adjourn? Yes. Um, are we in agreement that the... Sorry, I'm going to ask a question. I should have asked in the wrong yeah. order. Are we agreeing that the second meeting will focus, like the thing is, when we say we're going to focus on this for the second meeting, it's the same thing as the flood. We were going to focus on flood, remember? So I just want to throw that out there. You mean we might not actually hit that goal? Yeah, exactly. Especially Stop when calling it a goal. Well, we, I do mean that. <laughs> we can still try to be my goal. That's going to be the word of, word of the year for me now. And the rest of you are going to so we can shoot for the second, shoot but for the thing is now. that if we're going to shoot for the second, then we all have to be very um, critical in accepting or denying additions to the agenda. Agreed. Aren't you the one that accepts and denies them? All of you <laughs> send me what you want to talk about. Except yeah. Mark. Mark doesn't ever send me anything. So. That's exactly it. I did not. Okay. I think what we need to do is start what meeting 15 minutes early before Duncan shows up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Duncan's always here before you, so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Try okay. That one. Meeting adjourned at 8:45.